Hello, my name's Tigger the Incineroar and welcome to another video. Today I'll be ranking my top 11 favourite champions, all ranked. Now, I hope you enjoy this video and this is continuing my top 10 of important kind of things. So last time we did the ranking of the games, today I'll be ranking the champions. Anyway, of course there'll be a spoiler alert and this is all opinion. Also, credit to the people down below. So in last place is Iris. Now, some people are going to be quite annoyed or confused. Now, firstly, I don't hate Iris. I just don't think she's a good champion. Firstly, she lacked a bit of screen time. She was worse than older, and I really like older. She was really annoying in the anime. Doesn't do anything. And just doesn't fit well as a champion. A good star is her song her team and the difficulty and that's about it. Now at number 10 is Diantha, now the reason why she's here is because she was easily the easiest champion which is quite bad. She, had, she did literally nothing, she didn't do anything to affect the plot. She hasn't appeared since generation 6, lacked a lot of screen time. And the good was that she was a fairy type user and that she was an actress, but that's literally it, she did nothing. So in at number 9 is Wallace. Now some of you might be quite surprised I prefer Wallace over Diantha and Iris, but I mean he's one of those iffy champions because he didn't really do much. He did some stuff in Auras as far as I'm aware. And that was when there was a champion, uh, champion, a gym leader. He could also got demoted in a way, and has been way more of a gym leader. He's also very forgettable as a champion. And what is good is that kind of promotion from elite, uh, from gym leader, to champion, and also he's Wallace. What can't you love about Wallace? So number eight is Lance. Now some of you are gonna be quite surprised as Lance is one of people's favourites. Now, I do really like Lance, I think he's a really good champion, but he does get beaten out by other champions for multiple reasons. Now, you could say this is the best champion because, well, he is like an Elite Four member, he did do uh, some great things, he also got promoted in a way. Uh, from Elite 4 member to champion and his difficulty is quite good too as well as the theme, the theme is brilliant. The reason why he's not closer to the spot of number 1 is I haven't actually beaten him as a champion. And yes, he does do stuff which is good, like in the story, but he's been more of an Elite 4 member than a champion and you could see that he's been demoted as well. So yeah, he's not quite there for me. So at lucky number seven is blue. Now the reason why blue is like kind of halfway on the list, but not quite, is because I still like blue. I think he was a good champion, but he didn't stay long as a champion, and you'll see that that does affect this list quite a bit. And he's also quite annoying in the earlier games. He also doesn't help out whilst he's champion, although Let's Go did kind of fix that. And he is quite famous and is very strong as well. And because of all of the whole thing with him returning in Pokemon Sun and Moon and his appearances in Let's Go has definitely boosted his spot in this loop in this list. And you'll see, possibly in the future, he might be more of one of my favourite Pokemon, but for now, Pokemon, Pokemon characters, but for now, he's not quite there. So, number six is actually Trace, or I called it a different name, of course, but the reason why I don't like Trace very much is because he was too short of a champion and didn't do anything when he was a champion. However, the goods was he had a good difficulty, much like Kukui. And there's a whole reason why I really like Trace is because I called him, I, well, I named him after my grandfather. 
who passed away prior a bit, uh, like a month or so prior. And the reason why this like makes me like Trace more is because of course that whole thing. And I've made up my own little storyline of it being back in time and stuff like that. So yeah, so for personal reasons, I think Trace is definitely on the better half of this list. So number five is Cynthia. Now, I think Cynthia was too hard. However, the reason why she's quite good is because it's a good accomplishment. She also somewhat helped in the plot, which was also quite good, and was the champion for a long, long time, a lot longer than Trace or other champions were. She was probably one of the best champions, but I don't feel like I have a huge connection to her personally. But she also has guard chomper as well, which I think is very cool. So, yeah, I think she's one of the more perfect champions, but she's not personally one of my favourites. So, at number four is Steven. Now, personally, I'm not a massive fan of Auras, but I still quite like Steven. Now, the bad thing is, is he is a bit too easy. However, he had a brilliant anime appearance. I haven't seen the Gen 3 anime, but he was in the Gen 6 anime, and oh my god, I really enjoyed him. I liked him at the end of X, Y, and Z, and I also really enjoyed his appearance in that Mega Evolution spin off thing. Uh, he also helped out in the story, and also the inside joke that I had with my friend, which includes us laughing at Stephen Stone for no reason. And now it's on my RE box. Thing. Anyway, that's why he's number four. Now, in third place is Older. Now, the reason why Older is here, and I think a lot of people get quite confused, but the reason why he's here is because I generally quite like him as a champion. I think he was very cool. As well as he was very hard as well, hard to get to, which made it very rewarding. He also has one of the best quotes in all of Pokemon. Go and search it up, it's very good. I also really like his signature Pokemon, which is Volcarona. And he's also good in Black 2 and White 2. And another thing to make him really cool is his good backstory. As well as the fact that he actually does get involved with the plot a lot more than other champions. So yeah, he's literally one of the perfect champions for me. So, coming up in the runners-up spot is Hao. Now, yes, I do count Hao and Kukui as champions, and number two is Hao. Now, personally, I really like Hao. He's one of my favourite characters. I think he's so funny. He's just one of my favourite rivals, probably my favourite. And for him to be that final champion was great. I really liked him. He had a lot of involvement within the story, and whilst he wasn't the champion for so long, he still felt well deserved of the champion title. He had a lot of character development, and showing that he really did get stronger to get this role, I think also solidifies him here. And it's just generally such a good character, and one of my favourite champions overall. So, who's my favourite champion? And yes, it's Kukui. Now, some of the people are going to get annoyed. And the reason for this is it's my own opinion. Okay, we all have our opinions, and in my opinion, these two are champions. Kukui wins over Hal, not because of character development, but because of how cool he is. Now, Kukui set up the Pokemon League in this game. That's so cool, we've never seen a Pokemon League set up before, the fact that he set it up himself was really quite impressive and very cool as well. I really liked him as a champion and he was pretty difficult, much more difficult than Hal, and it felt quite satisfactory when you beat him. And also, there's a lot of nostalgia and I think he wins because he's the first champion that I battled, nostalgia and the whole thing with him setting up, which is why he's my favourite. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed, and yeah, that concludes my top 11 champions. Now, of course, this video will get updated, so 
it might get updated with Gen 8 or something like that. I also hope that you enjoy this video because of course I have all of the new videos. Credit to the people who own the videos and credit to Nintendo and all of that lot in the description. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed and I'll see you later. Goodbye.